Welcome to our lecture, what is Living Caregiver Program of Canada? Definition. The Living Caregiver Program, LCP, is a component of Canada's Temporary Foreign Worker Program. It was designed to enable Canadians to recruit foreign nationals to provide child care or home support for seniors or people with disabilities. What are the requirements for being a caregiver? In order to qualify as a nanny or caregiver in Canada, all applicants must meet the requirements set by Citizenship and Immigration Canada under the Foreign Caregiver Program. The requirements are You must have successfully completed the equivalent of a Canadian high school education. This requirement will help ensure that if you apply for permanent residence after two years as a living caregiver, you will be able to succeed in the general labor market. Studies indicate that the majority of new jobs in Canada require at least a high school education. And in order for you to prove the equivalent of your education, you might need the services of a accreditation service like WES in order to prove that your education is equivalent to the demand of high school in Canada. You must have six months of full-time training in classroom setting or 12 months of full-time paid employment, including at least six months of continuous employment with one employer in a field of occupation related to the job you are seeking as a living caregiver. You may have gained your training of experience in areas such as early childhood education, geriatric care, pediatric nursing, or first aid. You may also have completed your training as part of your formal education. This experience must have been obtained within the three years immediately prior to the day on which you submit an application for a work permit. So let's uh, take this uh, part by part. Uh, you can see here the requirement is that you have six months of full-time training in a classroom or 12 months a year of full-time paid employment that can make you qualify in your field as a caregiver. And he mentioned some areas that you might get some training such as childhood education, geriatric care, it means uh, taking care of seniors, pediatric nursing, or first aid. And that's part, if you are part of your formal education, that has to be included. So, the experience has to, uh, must have been obtained during the, within the three years prior to the application. So if you apply in 2019, the experience should have been obtained three years before. So we're talking about between 2016 and 19. If you work and accumulate that experience, that will be valid for you at the time of application. You must be able to speak, read, and understand either English or French at a level that allows you to function independently in a home setting. For example, you must be able to contact emergency services if required and to understand labels on medication. Very important. That's why the requirement of the language knowledge, because if you're taking care of, of kids or taking care of elderly or people with disabilities and need to help them with the medications, you need to be able to read the labels, you need to be able to follow the instructions, you need to be able to contact people in the case of an emergency, you need to be able to talk to family members. Your level of English or French, depending on where you're living in Canada, should be good enough for you to be able to communicate in that kind of requirements, okay? You will be unsupervised for most of the day and may re be required to communicate with someone outside the home, as I explained before. A good knowledge of English or French will also enable you to read and understand your rights and obligations, very important. You also need to be able to communicate with other people outside of work and understand what are your rights, obligations, and compliance with laws and, and customs in Canada. So. The knowledge of English or French is very important and we can emphasize more about this requirement. For that reason, even when you arrive to Canada, you need to work toward improving your level of communication, either English or French, so you can do your job better and you can also improve your chances for getting a permanent resident later on in your career. You must have a written employment contract between you and your future employer. The contract defines your job duties, hours of work, salary, and benefits. The contract also reinforces your employer's legal responsibility to you 
and these requirements help provide a fair working arrangement between the caregiver and the employer and provide both parties with a clear understanding of what is expected of them. The clearer the contract and the job offer is, the better, so both the employer and the caregiver are very clear about their responsibilities and duties of both parties and that way you can have a very good employment relationship. How much is the salary of caregivers in Canada? Very good question. A lot of people ask this question to our firm. So the information is that the average living caregiver salary in Canada is 25,350 Canadian dollars per year or the equivalent of 13 per hour. That's based on average in the industry. Entry labor position start at 21,450 per year, while most experienced workers make up to 34,125 per year. Again, this is based on national average. You need to check the information in the job bank uh, because when you go there, you'll be able to check by provinces, cities, and then have a better idea depending on where you're going. But these numbers are basically the average, national average, so just take into consideration that information. And also, it's going to be based on experience, your communication, and of course, the employer. Additional requirements for applicants. You will need your biodata or resume in English up to date. You're going to need reference from past and present employers at the time of the application. You're going to need two to four photos on a casual basis with children or elderly that you have taken care of just as a proof or testimonial. You want to three character references from people that know you. Uh, a dear family letter to your prospect employer handwritten. A proof of education required by the Canadian Embassy. A copy of a valid passport. A caregiver training certificate or any other certificate related to caregiver a copy of high school and college university diploma, a copy of transcripts of records, a National Bureau of Investigation Mark Visa Canada, can be one, for the police clearance from the country in which you are living for at least six months. And basically this is the main additional requirements that you can find when it comes to documents that you need to provide to apply not only for the immigration part, but also for the employer part of, of the process. Sometimes you might need a recruiter that specializes in hiring caregivers that will give you a list of documents they need or directly with the family. So again, depending on the situation, most of these documents will apply in your case. So take a look at it and uh, make sure you collect all and have all of them ready before you apply. How to apply for a work permit for a living caregiver already in Canada. So the situation that you might be already in Canada, you already start working, maybe in, as a living caregiver or is it in a different type of job with a work permit. So you can consider the choice of applying for a living caregiver. And for that you will must obtain an application kit under the living caregiver program from CIC website. The caregiver must submit the complete application form for work permit to the Canadian Visa Office. The work permit is usually valid for one year and to make sure you renew your work permit before it expires. So that's in case. Sometimes if you're visiting and you apply, the application will go to the Canadian Visa Office. If you're also can, uh, outside of Canada. You will need a letter as well as signed contract from your employer stating that your job is as a living caregiver is being offered for another year, we're talking about a renewal, and that should include the letter and your signed contract in your application to renew your work permit. And we're talking about that you're renewing your stay, your job with the employer. There is a processing fee of 150 Canadian dollars for these proceedings. The immigration procedures. The CIC visa office approve your application. The immigration officer will be giving you instructions for medical tests with accredited doctors. CIC always have a list of practitioners that are authorized to do medical tests for immigration applicants. So 
this visa office that serves your country of origin will provide that information to you. When the CIC officials receive proof that your medical results are satisfactory and you have met all other requirements, you will be issued a work permit. And the medical test is very important because if you're going to be dealing with kids or people with disability or elderly, they want to make sure that your health is not an issue. And for that, the medical tests are required. And hopefully once those uh, medical tests are clear, then you'll be able to get your work permit. The next steps. A, a work permit is not a travel document. Uh, we need to remember that. You must also get a passport and the immigration officer will be issued a Canadian temporary visa, a TRV, to the caregiver. The requirements for the passport and TRV will depend on whether or not your country of citizenship requires a visa to enter Canada. Remember that too. Upon the arrival to Canada, the living caregiver will show her valid passport and the letter of approval from the visa post where she came from to the immigration officer. On that time, the officer will issue a work permit to the living caregiver dated the day of her port of entry into Canada. So that information is going to be done at the border. Let's take a look at the website. And here we are on the website of the Government of Canada with the topic living caregiver program. So here in this page we can see all the information and we have several topics here that you might find interesting like find out if you can change your employer once you in Canada how can you stay or change your LCP work permit you have the link also about knowing your rights as a foreign worker how to apply to change your employer again and how to apply to stay in Canada permanently so these are choices that you can find in this uh, page that tell us everything we need to know about the living caregiver program and again this link is included in the lecture in the course. Another page that you can check also is how to compare your option for permanent residence as a caregiver. The good thing about caregiver is that it's open the window for you to be able to apply later on in as a permanent residence. So the programs that you can check here if you're working in Canada as a caregiver is the choices from caring for children pilot program Caring for people with high medical needs pilot program, the interim pathway for caregivers, and the living caregiver program. So, these are four of the programs that you can assess if you're working as a caregiver in Canada. And then you just have a comparison of the advantage and, uh, and disadvantage of each program. So, it tells you about the type of work, the amount of work experience that you can accumulate, okay, 24 months. 24 months, 12 months, the English or French language skill, uh, CLB5, CLB7, CLB5, depending what what is the program, the education requirement of every one of the programs, so interesting to see, and of course, every aspect of this comparison will help you decide which program is more convenient for you to go for, especially depending if you meet the requirements of work experience, language skills, and education. So, take a look at this page, it's very interesting, and that way you can make a decision before coming to Canada as a caregiver. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.